new from Night Beast Industries. When the economy takes its inevitable nosedive into a financial turd fire and the value of the world's currencies plummet equaling that of stale vomit, you'll need a way to buy and barter with the roving gangs and super PACs that will dominate the financial wasteland. That's why Night Beast Industries has come up with a surefire way to maintain your economic worth and, if you act now, even rise to the cream of the crap. Introducing Night Beast Industries' newest service, Rats for Cash. With Rats for Cash, you can enter any Night Beast outlet center and exchange any paper or coin currency for 100% certified and minted rats. That's right, you can swap your hard-earned but soon-to-be worthless cash for rats, the currency of the desolate future. Why rats? Because rats are strong. Rats are many. Rats will always be. So go to bit.ly slash nightbeast to sign up for our new service and ensure you're prepared for your dystopian financial future. That's bit.ly slash nightbeast. Swap your dying cash for hearty, powerful rats. Good afternoon, maniacs. This is Captain Brooks speaking. Please fasten your seatbelts and prepare for takeoff because Excuse we... Excuse me, sir. Sir? Oh. Can I get in there? Oh, you're right here. Yeah, I'm... Okay, yeah, let me just, uh, hold on. Yeah. I'll, I'll move my microphone for you one sec. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Uh, passenger getting on here. Oh, jeez. What are we doing? Yeah, why are we on this plane? I'm Paul. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Susan. Yeah. Uh, don't mind us. We're just, uh... Yeah. Just doing a little thing here. Don't mind me. Hey! Hey, Paul, can you speak up? I can't hear you from back here. Because we watched Turbulence 3 Heavy Metal, and it's time to do the hustle. Tonight on the season premiere of... B-Movie Mania! Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania! And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. Paul, are we allowed to have this equipment on, on this airplane? What do you mean? Well, we're all in an airplane, and we have electronic equipment on. Is this, like, is this okay? Well, it's fine until we take off, and then, um, I mean, we're supposed to, we're supposed to turn it off, but I don't, I don't know how we're going to do this with the microphones turned off, so. Yeah, because, I mean, why, if we, Paul, if you were going to have us do this episode on a plane, why didn't we just all sit together? Okay, well, I, I explained this on the, on the teaser, and, but I apologize Again, that this was a last-minute idea, and I wasn't able to get uh, all of our seats together. So that's why we're for for, for the listeners out there. We're, we're we're on we're on the plane right now, and uh, we're we're using G Chat like we normally do because we're not seated together. Uh, Mike, you're up front in in like first class, right? Yeah, I got bumped, and it is kind of very nice. Speak up! Wow, I can't you... I can't hear you from back here. What? I can't hear you guys from back here. He doesn't have his mic. He doesn't have his mic on. Well, no, he, he doesn't just, have he's... his headset on. <laughs> yeah, he's not using the G chat. Oh, are you just? Are you, can you hear us from back? Someone there? go tell him. Wait, ma'am, ma'am. Yes, sir. Ma'am, can you can you tell can you tell that guy back there being loud to please use the G chat? The G chat? Um. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, he's being disruptive. What? Um, anyway, l- listen, hold on. We're getting way of- ahead of ourselves here. Welcome to the season four premiere of uh, B Movie Mania. We are coming to you. Sir, from... I'm not totally sure what this means, but your friend in 14C said to turn on your G chat. Oh, 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 G chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let me let me put that on. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Chicago O'Hare Airport, where we have just boarded a. I think it's a 747. It's pretty big. Hey, guys, I'm on the G-Chat um, now. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's way better. Way yeah, better. Did we start the episode yet? All right. Yeah, we're trying to, you know, this is this is new for us, so we're trying to make this work. But we're going to be, this guys, how excited are you that we are going to be the first ever podcast to record an episode in the sky? I'm loving it's it. pretty great. I love this. 
but where are we even going? I'd be more pumped if I weren't by the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, so again, I'm really sorry about that. Uh, we're going to Tupelo, Mississippi. <laughs> Is that, why? <laughs> what? Well, because I was trying to time it where, like, you, you know, we... We normally record for like an hour and a half, and it's an hour and a half to Tupelo, so I figured it would work also, out pretty well. Also, if I'm not mistaken, that is the second evil place in America, or second yeah, most evil place in America. Yeah, it's not great, but anyway, uh, let's let's get into this because we also have a special guest for the season premiere tonight. His name is Tim Bavlenka, and uh, unfortunately, we couldn't get. I the plane was booked, and so. Uh, we couldn't get a, a ticket for Tim, so he's joining us from uh, his home in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Tim, are you there? Hello? Uh, uh, hello, guys? Can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hey. Hey, Tim. Hey. Tim, what are you... Wh where are you? Uh, I'm in the great city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ooh. Are you driving down to Tupelo, or what's the what's the plan here, Paul? No, he's just going to stay home, I think. <laughs> okay. I guess so. I mean, I kind of... Is that I, all right? I could quick see if there's a train coming that way. But, no, uh, it's, I mean, it's way too late for that. No, no, no. Yeah, we're on the plane already. The train would take like twice as long. <laughs> Paul, thanks for having me. Absolutely. Happy to have you. And and Tim is a, um, well, he's a goth expert. He's a, a bit of a heavy metal expert. And he's a hacking expert. So we're going to be relying on him tonight uh, as we go through this uh, review of the movie to... Uh, you know, give us some insight on on some of the stuff happening in this film. And Tim, we thank you for that. Yeah, I can't wait to you know put my skills to the test. That's a lot of expertise. Uh, are we? Yeah, Mike. I'm sorry. Are, I just are we, we? I mean, we have an in-house hacking expert. Are we? Who, who's that? You talking about Chris? Yeah, the guy who's done all of our hacking analysis for three seasons. Also, also check out my typing. <laughs> No, sorry, Tim. Not, nothing. I'm sure you are very good at hacking as well. I just we have an expert for that. And, and also, I mean, he, Chris, the the guy who's been giving us our hacking info until now, is also the guy jammed all the, the tallest guy jammed all the way in the back of the plane. <clears throat> and again, I do apologize for that, but it wasn't. Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can hack my way to first class. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Hey, I thought the one time. I was gonna get a, get away with you not clacking on your keyboard was gonna was when you're on a plane and you're still doing it. <sighs> I don't go anywhere without my keyboard, Paul. Quick takes. Quick takes. Chris, stop <laughs> typing and hit me with your quick take for Turbulence Three Heavy Metal. Well, you know, I had a whole quick take thing that was actually about an hour and a half long, slightly longer than this movie. Oh, quick pilot announcement here. Just about ready to depart. We should be away on schedule in the next couple of minutes or so. <sighs> okay. We'll do our best to give you a smooth flight, so the turbulence is always a possibility for that reason. Hell yeah, there's going to be some turbulence. You keep your left strap securely fastened throughout the flight. And just bolt to the cabin crew. If the seatbelt sign is switched off, it's switched on uh, for turbulence, then uh, please ensure that you return to your seat immediately. Also, please note this is a non-smoking flight. Please make yourselves comfortable. I do hope you enjoy the flight. All right. Sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Okay. Well, as I was going to say before, I was rudely interrupted. Um, <laughs> Keep your voice down. I had I had a very probably longer than usual quick take. Uh, it was slightly longer than the movie itself, but I thought it was maybe a bit too long for the plane ride. So mm -hmm. instead, I'm just going to say that words mean nothing. Wow. Okay. Harsh. Harsh way to start things off here. Mike, what do you got for uh, Turbulence 3? Warm towel, Mike? I get Thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, well, I, I currently have a warm towel, like a warm, just moist God damn it, towel. Mike. Really? It's very nice. Damn. Um, but... Yeah, dude, I've never been in first class before. This is fucking great. <laughs> I have a I have a warm towel too, Mike, but it smells suspiciously like urine. Yeah, that's I'm sure. Okay, so my <laughs> quick take though, my quick take is uh, about you know Turbulence Three Heavy Metal is, I kind of like it. Makes me think of Nam. It never stops. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of this guy's music? I listened to about ten seconds and got a headache. I kind of like it. It makes me think of Nam. It never stops. 
Very nice, very nice. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, very oh. shortly we'll be oh, ready for the pilot Just announcement. Your mobile phones and electronic devices should be switched off. Please make sure your seatbelt is now fastened and do make yourself comfortable. Thank you. This guy won't shut up. Hmm. He's Australian, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, Jay, what'd you think of uh, Turbulence 3, Heavy Metal? I I will just say I forgot that Rucker Hauer was in it until I started mm -hmm. watching it. And anytime you see Rucker Hauer in a film, you know, it's it's got to be good. Damn right. Mm -hmm. Tim, this is a thing that we do called uh, quick takes. You got anything for us? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I think I got a grasp of uh, what you guys do here. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> first, first of all, I, you know, if I'm not... If I, you know, I, I'm willing to let the uh, the hackers' credit slide, uh, but I would like to say, to my credit, I am a uh, film studies PhD dropout. Mm. So I have that going for me. It's more than I've done. Uh, yep. However, for quick takes, you know, um, this is actually maybe the third time I've seen this movie. Mm -hmm. I originally I watched it at some point in undergrad in my dorm so freshman or sophomore year back when the sci-fi okay, channel quick take. Just, it's a quick take they just played weird ass <laughs> movies <laughs> <laughs> so I, 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 for me this was very um, uh, comforting it was very familiar and uh, quite frankly I would have uh, begged to have gone on that plane <laughs> mm, wow. <laughs> yeah, T3 Heavy Metal was directed by uh, Jorge Montes... Mont Montesi, Jorge Montesi. I hope I'm saying that right, Mr. Uh, Montesi. Apologies if I didn't. Uh, and it was released, guys, on May 13th, 2001. So this is shortly before a lot of things would change uh, on 9-11, as it's known. Well, and you know what? But the one thing this movie does do is, you know, Columbine was in 1999. True. And this movie references Columbine. That's true. Just a couple years later. So I it was like, I watched that and I'm like, is that kind of like a too soon? Uh, okay, we're taking off. All right. All right, here oh, we go. Oh, yeah, we are, we're taking off. Okay, here we go. I don't feel a damn thing. This is amazing. <laughs> Holy shit. Chris, how's it going back there? Shitty, literally. That's all you get by the bathroom. <laughs> guys, 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 guys. The, the, the stewardess literally came said it was okay to have my seat back while we're doing this. I, I'm leaning back what? right now, guys. We're oh, taking off, come and on. I'm leaning back. I bet she doesn't give a fuck about my trade table either. Holy shit. Oh, wow. I didn't, Mike, no offense, but I didn't pay for a first class ticket for you, so I don't know. I, I have no idea how you got I got bumped. There. Oh, I have, like, reward points and all, but, like, I didn't think I had enough to, like, get bump status, but I, eh, lucky me. Oh, wow. <sighs> Well, are you guys uh, are okay with continuing as we're as we're climbing here? Yeah, sure. Okay, cool. So, uh, Turbulence Three, we we open with some protesters at an airport who are uh, a little upset about quote unquote death rocker Slade Craven's music. Those protesters oh. looked a lot like looked a lot like the ones that we passed by coming into the airport protesting this this episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was weird. What was that about? I loved the name Slade Craven, by the way. <laughs> you did? It's a good name. I love it. I love it. It's a really good name. Well, Jay, uh, this is sort of the first time we see him. Why don't you sort of describe his look for us? I mean, he's clearly like a Marilyn Manson type. He's got mm -hmm. white face paint with dark eyes, long dark hair, thin, looks a lot like the keg from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> oh, um, I wonder why. <laughs> um... <laughs> Leather, you know, just metal studs, just awesome. That's pro. That's what I wanted to look like in high school. <laughs> Chris, you did too. Don't laugh. I well, <laughs> hey, I've got the corpse paint on right now. So. That's true. I don't know why they let you on the plane with that <laughs> face paint on. I, I charmed the TSA agent. <laughs> 
Oh, Slade Craven, man. Uh, Chris, I understand that you did a little bit of research on uh, on on the actor who played Slade Cra Craven. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I think his name was uh, John Mann. I totally forgot yeah. to write that down. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, he passed away like in November, so two or three months mm -hmm. as of uh, this recording. So pour some, really pour sad. some for John Mann. Yeah, pour some for John Mann. But he was apparently a really big. Uh, his band was really big in Canada, all through the hmm. uh, the nineties. Jazz, the 90s, right? Was it jazz? I don't know. I didn't get that far into my research. But. It was a Celtic folk band. Oh, no. that's close to jazz. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Wow. Interesting. And let me say too, by just if I may, real quick, they got the right actor for Ooh, Slade mm -hmm. Crane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He looks awesome. Yeah, he was. He was <laughs> God great. Damn it. Jay loves Slade Craven. I love Slade Craven, man. And I'm only I'm telling you, it's the the love for Slade is only going further as we go into this thing. I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Very cool. And you know, I gotta say I'm I'm with Jay on that one. And yeah. not yeah. just because I, I think we I all are. follow everything Jay does, but I really dig Slade Craven. <laughs> he was awesome. And there's a big reason why. I don't wanna say it yet, but there's a big reason why I loved Slade Craven <laughs> later on the movie. Alright, well let us know when we get there. Definitely. Um Tim, uh, you know, as we said, you're a you're a bit of a metal expert here. Do you would you consider Craven Slade Craven to be a death rocker? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, you know, so death rock has this kind of uh, uh, lineage back to like Christian death, or um, it, I mean, it, there is kind of a, a specific genre of death rock that goes. It, I mean, it's an '80s genre. Hmm. It's something that is like, I wish I had some names off the top of my head to give to you right now, but it, it's sort of like, I, it, it kind of came and died in the 80s, and, 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 and Ra Craven Slade is basically, uh, it's very oh, much... I'm sorry, what? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Slade Craven? Slade Craven. Uh, <laughs> you got your notes in front of you? <laughs> Slade, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll be more quiet. I'm sorry. Slade Craven is a, uh, I would say, more of a pretty traditional, uh, like, goth, new metal, hot topic kind of artist. Okay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's, But I, to say he's death rock doesn't quite put it in the same milieu as um, some particular artists. Got it. Okay. Thank you for the expertise. Um Let's keep going here. Slade shows up with his bandmates. Chris, this is where we first hear his famous uh, catchphrase. Can you can you give it to us here? Oh, I don't remember. I don't think I wrote that down. God, God damn, damn it. it. Is that his catchphrase? God damn it. Was I right? Let's do the hustle. There it is. <laughs> All right, boys. Let's do the hustle. Yep. I totally missed that. I got some of his other lines, though. Sir, we've had a few complaints from the other passengers that you're being too loud back here. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Please keep it down a little bit. Um, you know, but I gotta say, these kind of notes and this kind of answers to your questions, Paul, is probably why I'm stuck back here next to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, and again, I'm really sorry about that. Sure you are. So, so I want to talk a little bit about Z-Web TV, <laughs> um, which is obviously an integral part of our story here. Really cool. Uh, Mike... Yeah, Mike, can you kind of explain to us a little bit about, like, what the what the situation is with this whole Z-Web TV thing? Uh, it's like, <laughs> it, it's apparently an online channel similar to, say, things like My Damn Channel or uh, Live Leak, I guess, maybe. More like, I don't know, it's like MTV or something or some sort of, like, alternative cool website that you can watch stuff, but apparently they have a subscription thing where you can pay to watch, like, a live special event, such as right. uh, Marilyn Manson type doing a concert on a plane. After months of negotiations with the FAA, internet broadcaster Z-Web TV has finally been given the go-ahead for a live broadcast of megastar Slade Craven's farewell concert from a 747 traveling from L.A. to Toronto. You, you know what's really great about Z-Web TV, though, I want to say, is that this whole concert on the plane is being broadcast through the web on your dial-up connection. So just imagine, <laughs> imagine that video quality. <laughs> yes, indeed. And uh, so it's being <laughs> broadcast on the plane 
but 40 lucky Slade Craven fans, 40 lucky winners, get to actually board the plane and be part of his... I don't know if we've mentioned this yet. This is the last show ever, Slade's last show. He's, he's hanging up his leather boots, so this is a big deal. And they never say why, right? Like, they no, never say why he's quitting. I don't quitting. think so. I was about to ask that, too. I don't think they do. Uh, and so according to... Uh, Erica, our our lovely uh, broadcaster here, the plane. Does does anybody remember what she calls the, this this decked out plane? <sighs> what is it? I don't remember. Right now, I'm boarding Z Web TV's specially designed, absolutely radical 747 flying music station. Oh yeah. Oh, oh I right. thought you had been a name. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of fucking. The slang is out of date even for 2000. Like hustle. I mean, come on. Who uses yeah, that hustle. in the 21st yeah. century? I think I think she said something smoking at some point, as if like the mask was still popular amongst <laughs> fucking this crowd. <laughs> Jay, I want to talk Rutger Hauer. Yeah, it's just it's Rutger Hauer just like chilling. Yeah. Um. Okay. If there's a criticism I have of the movie, it's that really Rutger Hauer doesn't have enough to do. I would say he's important to the plot, but. He, he doesn't have that much going on, really. I mean, there's a pretty big twist with him. There is, sure. We'll get there, but, I, like... I think it's mostly Rutger Hauer cashing in on a paycheck. Yeah. And you filmed yeah. all of his scenes in, uh, you know, maybe four hours. Oh, my God. And <laughs> it, that reminds me, Tim. Like, I was... I, I couldn't help but ask Paul this prior to this flight, but how mo how easy was this movie to shoot for Gabriel Anwar? Oh, jeez. <laughs> she was pretty much in a room. Like, we haven't even talked about her yet. Can I get you something, Mike? Oh, thank you. Yes, I'll have the I'll have the Edmund St. John's uh, 2009 Bone Jolly Gamay, uh, please. You got it. What? Thank thank you. Oh, sorry. I I, they, I get free wine up here, guys. Sorry. I, they have, like, a really nice wine list. That's on the menu up there? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What the, the fucking fuck? Bone Jolly Gamay Noir. It's on you. It's I great. believe that's a Beaujolais. <laughs> it is, yeah. Good God, Chris! You better keep your uh, your legs in the fr from sticking out in the aisle. That that beverage cart will really. I know. Well, I'm just gonna say, Paul, make sure you somebody in the bathroom right now is uh oh got, got a storm brewing because I can hear it. I hope it's not. <laughs> oh, I hope it doesn't God. get on my recording. Don't get any ideas. Oh, it's pretty. It's pretty loud. You experiencing your own kind of turbulence back there? <laughs> yeah, tur <laughs> a little turbulence, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, put the word turn in front of you, lens. <laughs> Mike, why don't you switch with Chris? Why don't you be nice? He, he's, he's got no leg uh, room back there at all. I got this. Uh, I don't I don't think I can, like, take this wine with me, though, so. All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. That was a stinker. Uh, Jay, what did you say? Uh, who's the actor's name who played Kate? Is it, is it Gabrielle Anwar? Yes. Yeah. Some of you uh, listeners might recognize her from a little show on USA called Burn Notice. Oh. Uh, or, if you're me, you'd recognize her from something called Things to Do in Denver When You're Dead. Oh, that was a good movie. I knew her from The Three Musketeers. <laughs> the Disney <version. laughs> Or, if you're me, you'd recognize her from Body Snatchers. This movie, the, talk about cashing a paycheck. Man. Hey, it's the Turbulence franchise, man. Well, yeah. Get okay. that turbulence money, you know? <laughs> turbulence money. Oh, man, I guarantee she did the whole movie in, like, two days. Well, Chris, what is her? what does she do? What's her job in this movie? Her job in this movie is to capture the hacker oh. and then work with him. But, but what does the hacker have to do with anything else? Oh, he's just a big Slade Craven fan. Yeah. Almost a big a fan as Jay Right, is. like, he, he just wants to, <laughs> like, so Slade Craven's charging money for everyone to watch this, and this hacker's just... The hacker, as far as I could tell, wasn't even sharing the feed with other people. It's just oh, he no. specifically wanted to watch it for free. Yeah, I think you're yeah, right. He just didn't want to pay for it. So like yeah. a ten dollar, a ten dollar fee. He just, yeah. he just didn't <laughs> want to do it. And and you know he could afford it because that apartment, his, he must be doing very well as a hacker to be able to afford that huge I mean, place. Does, how often in the film does he even stand up out of his chair? At, well, <laughs> at least once, once at the very end once of the movie. movie. <laughs> yes, yeah. once at the very end. And I think she puts cuffs on him toward the beginning. Well, That's guys, it. did you catch a little bit of chemistry between Gabriel Anwar and the actor who played the hacker? No, I didn't. I, I mean, I, no. I think it was supposed to be there. Oh, yeah. Well, 
they have a kid in real life. So uh, <laughs> what? <yeah>. What? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? You're joking? Yeah, no. Yeah, and uh, apparently, according to Wikipedia, he is godfather to her two children from uh, her other marriage. Wow. wow. Oh wait, they're not a couple currently. No, they had broken up or something before. Before that's movie. Hollywood. Apparently, they were, they were on good terms though. Well, good oh. for them. Oh. Yeah, that's wow. Well, okay, so then he was okay. So he was in Turbulence Two, right? As a different character. That's correct. I, I watched Turbulence Two the other night, and he's actually the main character in Turbulence Two. Okay, so then they cast him in Three, and he's like, "Honey, will you be on this in this movie with me?" She's like, sure. Similarly, he's been in a ton of stuff, too. He was in yeah. Nightbreed. He was in A River Once Through It. He was, I think he's been in some Lynch films and stuff like that. I mean, he's been in a lot of movies. Do we know his name? Craig Schaefer. Yeah. So, I, yeah, interesting that he's in bo- both films here. Uh, we get introduced, his name's Nick in this, Nick the Hacker. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a mother hacker. <laughs> he is? Yes. Is that a that's fancy what, first class term, Mike? I believe that's the term for just the the hack that the mother of all hackers, the mother hacker. It's it's also through him that we get to see Slade's um, hit video where he keeps a razor in his freezer. <laughs> well, yeah, this is where we get this is we just now got to the opening credits right here. Oh, and he yeah. also like will periodically do goose stepping. Yeah. Which I found very problematic. <laughs> so, to the I mean, Slade, Slade Craven is canceled, but, you know, it was of a certain time. Jay, were you a fan of this uh, song that we get during the opening credits? I mean, I do like it. It reminded me of sort of like my, my Gravity Kills days, you know, oh, like man. sort of Sister yeah. Machine Gun type of stuff. <laughs> Jay, did you know Gravity Kills is recording a new album? No. Yeah. Really? <laughs> really. That's awesome. I, I really liked their first one. I was a big fan. I was I was a big fan when I was a, a youngster. Yeah, I mean, it's actually like, it's actually pretty good music. I think John Mann is actually <laughs> singing some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like the song. I, I do. like the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Shut up, Mike. All right, I'm opening. Are we split on this? Mr. Warm Towel up there. I'm, I'm opening up my snacks. Well, we, didn't, we don't even get snacks. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's just a short flight. This is a giant bag of Ritz crackers. Oh my god. Well, no snacks are better than the moldy bread I got back here. Moldy bread? <laughs> Chris just gets yeah. the leftover snacks yeah. that no one's oh. taken yet. <laughs> For years. Oh, oh Jesus. I can uh, barely so choke we, it down. It's terrible. So we get all these death rockers, uh, uh, getting searched as they're as they're trying to board the plane here for the for the show, and they're and they're very excited. All right, for this Slade show, like Craven fans are nuts. Like who wouldn't be? Right. Yeah. But this, but this is the experience of a lifetime. Absolutely. Yeah. Last show on a plane. It's only maybe 50, 75 people total. Forty. I mean, 40, 40, 40 fans. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is literally the experience of a lifetime. Forty lucky winners of the Craven's Last Shot contest will join Craven and his band for this smoking party, the first live, completely interactive, real-time internet broadcast in history. Sir, can I get you something to drink? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have. Um, we're gonna go just Diet Coke. Okay, one Diet Coke, thank you. Thank you. You got a Diet Coke, Jay? Yeah, I do. All right. You know, you're two. You, can you see me? You're two rows in front of. Like, turn around. You see me? Oh yeah. Hey. I thought hey. I could like hear you and then hear you through the yeah. chat. Yeah. Something to drink, sir? Um yeah, do you do you guys have cranberry juice? We do, yes. All right. Um I'll take one of those. And do you have any uh I'll do that and do you have white claw? White claw, sure. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'll do one white claw, please. Can we just skip over a couple minutes here and talk about like when he starts playing cuz I mean pretty much just they get the, everybody sits down and the plane takes off, right? Or uh, the fans the fans want to like rush, they're all jazzed up and they just want to rush. There's a big door, like a blast door mm-hmm. that separates the stage area from the the people in the seats. And the fans want in. Go. You never know what's going to happen with Slade Craven on board. He's just taken the stage and is going to start his first yeah, set in Craven, the middle let's of take off. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Which, by the way, is just awesome. Like it look, they put like a just a cave. It's just an industrial looking <laughs> cave in the plane yeah. with a stage and all the crap, the amps and stuff. Sweet. God damn in it. fact, Erica, the. Uh, 
the broadcaster host <laughs> says that the set is like nothing you've ever seen before. That is that, true. Jay? That is literally yeah. true. Have you ever seen a stage in a plane? <laughs> no. Let alone a stage in a cave in a plane. <laughs> yeah, can't can't say that I have. Yeah, can I just say real quick though that uh, the when all the kids get up to go see the band and you know, the band's getting out, those those flight attendants have just lost control of the plane. In fact, they're almost <laughs> as bad as the flight attendants back here in the tail section. Oh, uh-huh. that's <sighs> no way to get peanuts. No, well, yeah, I'd hate to see what kind of worms are crawling out of them. I mean, I don't know how you guys are like can even see anything up there because the light back here is so dim and the lights <laughs> keep kind of flashing. <laughs> Terrible. Wow. Yeah, Marcus uh, has been great to me. He's he's a real sweetie. He's been very kind. You're on first name basis with these guys up up there. <laughs> he almost insisted, man. He kind of just kept. Wow. He kept saying Marcus like as if like wanting to make sure I knew his name. Ah. Uh, yeah, Chris. Good luck with the uh, coronavirus back there. I know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know, at least it's uh, not a helicopter. Am I right, guys? Oh, okay, that oh. will get cut for sure. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay, okay. So Cave Raven starts his his music up Cave, early, what, and everyone rushes in, and it's some fucking whatever. Cave Raven. Yeah. Right. What? It's 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 a jam. He jams, man. He he wants to do the hustle. He does the hustle. Yeah. Cave. Cave Raven's not a bad name for a, a goth musician who's playing in an industrial cave. Uh, that's pretty yeah, that's true. I don't think Slade Raven actually sings a song for a long time. Like it's just it's just this well, band okay. kind of jamming out for like twenty minutes. This is another a minor criticism of mine is that I don't think there's enough music in this thing. Oh God. Yeah. Mike disagrees. Good. I, you know, let's get some disagreement. Let's. let's yeah, I'd Rutger Hauer myself if there was much more. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, during the so we get like a full performance here. We do get like a whole song to sort of like kick off the set, and then during the second song, you know, because part of his like character is that he pulls some a- some antics, and uh, something kind of scary happens here, if you'll recall. Well, he takes one of his forty fans. And uh, apparently, someone he had uh, an electric chair installed into the plane, <laughs> into the cave in the plane. Because hey, why not? It's part of the show. It's an FAA approved yeah. electric it's chair. FAA approved electric chair. <laughs> they did have it off during takeoff, so it's totally this fine. This is a pre nine eleven electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you you would they would oh, never man. let you on the plane with an electric chair these days. Never. You know, we'll sip my white claw here. He picks a fan at supposed random and uh, kills him. Yeah, just electrocutes him right there, right in front of everyone. He's dead? Credits. He's dead? <laughs> he dies. They're, and they're like, oh no, it was an accident. Credits roll. And it's like, yep. that's why you don't do that on planes. <laughs> it's a PSA. If it wasn't for that, there'd be electric chairs on every plane now. <laughs> <laughs> it was effective. Uh, no, he's fine. He's fine. Well, I don't know if I'd yeah. say fine. He was electrocuted to unconsciousness. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was joking. No, I think he was. No, he wasn't joking because of later in the movie. He makes it. He's like being a good fan and playing along and making you it seem like he got electrocuted. He the electric chair comes into play later, though. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think everyone knows that <laughs> Chekhov's electric chair. It makes sense. <laughs> but. Well, all right. I want to see what you guys thought. Did do, am I wrong? I thought he really got, shocked him to unconsciousness. No. I thought he was playing along. There's a lot of power that goes to that electric chair to give off all the sparks and stuff, because it is theatrical. Okay. But I don't think it's hooked up to him where it would actually hurt the person sitting in it. But Which later is why on, the FAA had to approve it. Yeah. So later <laughs> on when they when they do use it, it's 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 utilized in a different way. So all right. right. Here's the weird thing, like this seems like it's a private plane. Mm. And so does the FAA need to even approve anything? Did they even need to go through TSA security? Tim, this was a pre-9-11 time period with anything goes. Right. Like, well, that's what Tim's saying. Yeah. Like, we, I don't know how like when I, you know, when I book a plane, a private jet to Saudi Arabia, <laughs> I don't have to go through TSA. I just go aboard my private jet. What do you, you want know? to drink? Uh, can I get a, can I get a rum and coke? Rum and coke? No, we don't have that. Here, take this. Oh, Oh, uh, you know, hey guys, guys, I don't know what 
kind of drinks you guys got? I ordered a rum and coke, and all I got was some water with a nasty little film on the top of it. Gross. <laughs> you should drink it. It tastes like oil. It tastes like oil. You Ugh. should totally drink it. Ugh. Do you have some sort of issue with water? Yeah. This is all I get. I get water with some film on it. That's all I get. Look, if you want to make a complaint, you can do it after the flight. If I survive this flight, I don't know what this drink is going to do to me. So, so Mike Slade is in. Uh, uh, Slade goes to the bathroom to wash his hands. Well, speaking of, and, I'm going to hit the uh, bathroom right now if I can brave the stench. Give me, give me. A what timing? The bathroom. What yeah. timing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you remember what happens here? Somebody walks up to him. And this is after somebody, I mean, someone got killed earlier than this, though. It's the, the roadie got, yeah, the roadie gets killed. Yeah. So a roadie's dead from a gun. Well, the hacker and the FBI agent, who are now working together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, why not? The, ha- the FBI agent has actually just arrested the hacker, and this is what proves to her that he is on to something, at least, because we see a shot... Of, a, of the Brody getting pushed down and then a, a, a getting shot in the neck, in like the back of the neck. Yeah. So that happens. But then Slade's washing his hands in the bathroom. He gets knocked out. Well, we don't see that. We just see him look up and say, like, what do you want? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, right. you know what happens. Right, right. Well, you think maybe he's dead or whatever, but then Slade comes back out for a second song finally. Yeah, he does. Finally. <laughs> Finally comes out, but he has something with him. Jay, what what does he have now that he's back? He's got a gun. He's got a gun. Yep. And again, Slade is sort of known for his antics. Yeah, he's, he's obviously he just put a guy in an electric chair. So yeah. they're about to hit turbulence. So like the the main pilot comes out to check on the what's happening. Oh, Mike, he's out there who? during this. Mike, Mike, would that be the titular turbulence? The titular turbulence. Uh, uh, the, t- the, the turbulence are not titular until they hit the third one. Mm. So <laughs> be careful with that. Yeah, but Fun Rucker facts. Hauer says turbulence at, at one point, right? He does get the line, yeah. Speaking of, someone says the fucking line from the tagline from the second movie in this. <laughs> someone literally says, <laughs> are you up for the ride? Which is like the fucking poster for the second movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Hmm. Sorry, Good back. just go. That was just I. No, that's never. fine. <laughs> I just wanted to say I thought it was kind of a neat little trick that some of the characters get to break the fourth wall in certain spots because the camera is also serving as as the camera for Z Web TV. So every now and then, like Slade will be talking, and then he'll look at the. Hey, Who's guys, making that noise? What is that? Guys, guys, real quick. Hey, hey, there's a panhandler back here. What should I... <laughs> there's what not. should I do with that? No. <laughs> do I give him any money? That's not possible. No, no. I don't have any I don't have any cash. I'm sorry. No, you don't need to do dollars, like bills, just, you know, any coins. Jay, what's... Uh, or Chris, what's going on with the uh, Z-Web TV view count right now? Um, well, I will tell you, but it's kind of hard to speak over those sounds and the cheering from the goddamn cockfights that are happening back here. <laughs> oh. What kind of flight did you oh, book for no. me, Paul? Come on. Are you on the same plane? I Yeah, I can see you guys like 50 rows ahead, but... Are you guys on Frontier? <laughs> oh. I got I got cockfights for in-flight inter- entertainment. <laughs> I have a tablet. They okay, gave me a great. tablet just to have, and it mounts to the back, but I can take it off oh, and touch boy. it. Anyway, the point is the views are skyrocketing for Z-Web TV now, now that all this crazy drama is happening. Very true. I mean, I, and he gets some serious numbers. He gets some serious numbers. Like and, millions. Well, it also, it, it's not just numbers, but he's getting its paid subscriptions. Right. So every number that signs up and this this was a weird thing for me is is it's not just the numbers of people watching because it, it, they they have to pay for it. So it doesn't matter if the numbers go down because that just means somebody paid money and they they close their browser. That's a good point. Just stop with your logic, okay? We need these numbers to be up. Right, right. Well, obviously, we we never see the perspective of his business manager, so that never comes into play. Right. We want these numbers to be up to see the ultimate, you know, satanic conclusion. Erica, 
The video is almost over and we are losing viewers. Damn it, we have to get Craven back on stage. Nick the hacker and Kate, they start working together and hack back into the feed so that they can see what's going on. Chris, is that a thing that you can do? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I assume okay. the feed is still on. So if he could hack into the feed the first time, he could, you know, it's not too far to, you know, stretch your disbelief into that. He could still hack into the, the raw feed. Sir, uh, we've had several complaints from other passengers regarding you. Oh, God damn it. That's not me. I showered this morning. No one else back here did. You are being too loud. You need to calm down. <laughs> God. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I can't. I have to talk this loud because the noises coming out of that bathroom are kind of drown me out. Chris, we're trying to do a podcast. Chris. Yeah, I know. And people are shitting right next to me. All right. So <sighs> I want to bring something up briefly that I, I did not understand one bit. And I really need someone to help me figure this out. Let's hear it. Um, Is it when San Diego explodes? San Diego explodes, Mike. Everybody out! Slade informs the FBI that there's bombs at the San Diego airport, and then they're like, nah, everything's cool here, and then kaboom! (laughs) Like, the air control tower just explodes. And we get one of those beautiful shots in, like, a movie like this where... There's an explosion behind someone, and they jump backwards, like they're supposed to fall through a window backwards, and it is beautiful. Yeah. We should probably also point out that prior to this phone call, Slade actually shoots the pilot. <laughs> yeah. Kind of important. Let's kill someone who's already lived a long and boring life. Okay? <laughs> okay, can I just say this? Look, here it is. Slade is... <laughs> Uh, Slade is part of a satanic cult that um, is wanting to take the plane and crash it into this unholy spot once they have 10 million viewers on their YouTube. There you go. Well, how do they figure that out, though, Jay? Hacking and (laughs) the fact that pretty much everyone tells them. Yeah. They cross-reference the manifest of the plane with the FBI database. They find out he's been involved with arson and something else, and then somehow there's also a mention of, you know, Guardians of the Gateway, which is obviously the group of satanic cultists who believe in the Stoll prophecy, which is about the one who will lead the 10 million. It's a whole thing. They've been implicated in arson, violence. What do they call themselves? Guardians of the Gateway. Oh, that's catchy. And, and this is also the, the big part where we figure out that um, the Slade Craven that we saw shoot the pilot is not the real Slade Craven, who is tied up in a different room. I have a match. His name is Simon Flanders. Yeah, I saw that guy on the plane earlier. Simon Flanders is his name. <laughs> yeah. And how uh, do they determine... Does anybody remember how they determine... That, that it's two different people because I didn't understand this. Yes, either. this is like yeah. one of my favorite bits. It's a good joke. <laughs> it's great. Right. When when uh, Real Slade calls into the FBI and he's like, yo, this isn't me. They're like, well, how do we know it's oh, not yeah. you? It looks like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, all right, check it out. I paid this amount of money in taxes. It's really me. Okay, FBI. Last year I paid $4,200,057 in income tax. I remember because it hurt. You check, check it, it out. Agnes Barrett here. Pull up last year's IRS return for Slade Craven. And I thought that was really smart. Like, yeah. that was a really smart thing. <laughs> like, he knew it off the top of his head, the exact number. Mm-hmm. Well, he's angry about paying that much. It yeah, really he didn't want to pay that much. <laughs> yeah, it was like, what, four million something? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But because this is an audio-only podcast, I just want to point out that fake Slade, I mean, it's the same actor, so they look exactly, exactly alike. That was weird. Okay, Paul, I'm not going to bullshit you right now. I was not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you guys aware what? that there was a voice actor who did the voice for Fake Slade? Yes. yes. I thought they were yeah. different actors, and it was just really good makeup. <laughs> <laughs> they did wow. a great job. But, but, I mean. but, but to Mike's point, there was a different voice actor, and I was just like, well, this guy doesn't sound anything like the other guy. So, <laughs> And that came into play also because Kate and Nick 
somehow figure out, they like do voice analyzation on Nick's computer and, and find out that they, they compare uh, Simon's voice with Slade's voice, like a recording of him, and figure out that it's not the same voice. Right. Because all good hackers have voice analysis programs. Well, and we sh- could we just also point out right now that Rutger Hauer and the reporter are also in the cult? And they're bad guys. Oh well, yeah. Did, did, so, did they ever really like explain that, or does it just like here's the scene where that shit happens? I, I think that's it. Yeah, there there's a hint at at the be- not the beginning, but after San Diego explodes, the FBI is trying to call the plane and tell him to be careful or whatever, and he like uses his gun to like butt some controls and break the radio or something. Yeah, and that's where you're kind of like, wait, what? What's that about? Right. And right, then, right, right. And Paul, can I? tell you this is the thing I've been waiting to say that I love so much about this movie Yeah, is you I, you really think for a minute that Slade is the bad guy you're, you're kind of led to believe that through the whole yeah. thing he's crazy he's like a satanic rocker at the beginning through the, through the film you think okay he's doing this electric chair stuff he's going to be the bad guy he's going to kill somebody and things are going to get out of hand yeah. Yeah, sure. no no <laughs> Slade is the guy with the gun He's the John McClane of this movie, <laughs> which is what I loved. I love that they, they turned it and made this, like, crazy-looking creeper. To die hard. like the hero, is the, di- the die-hard hero. I loved that. Yeah. Excuse me, I, totally I need agree. to use the bathroom. Do you mind getting up for a moment? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, see, Turbulence 3, that's what we're talking about. Go ahead. Turbulence? Go ahead. You know, right. while, uh, I just want to say, though, I would love to see a scene where fake Slade and the journalist girl kind of, like, plan out what, what's going to happen. Like, as he holds her at gunpoint, and everyone's thinking, oh, it's Slade Craven's gone crazy. Right. And he's got the journalist girl, like, ah, oh, fearing for her life. But no, they're in cahoots. And, yeah. and she's an accredited journalist. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a true. weird thing. She's like a long-standing, like MTV equivalent VJ, who has just been a sleeper agent in the in the Slade Craven, <laughs> <laughs> but not even the Slade Craven cult, but like the fake Slade Craven cult. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's not like she would be in. Yeah, she wouldn't be influenced by Slade Craven, right? Like, because he's not really part of. No, it, he's so just a phony. Her, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the phony's the one. So there's no tie to the cult. So somehow you're right. She had to be a sleeper fucking agent. <laughs> <laughs> and so because of that, you get Slade Craven with a pistol slinking his way through the plane. <laughs> Just like, what is going on here? Oh, the, gar- the Guardians of the Gateway is what she would have been a member of. Yeah. 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 She would have been a sleeper agent for the Guardians of the Gateway. Oh, she and she specifically is the daughter of the Gateway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. And what's great is is like they set it up where she's just like this cool fucking babe. She doesn't she doesn't necessarily even wanna be there. You know, she just is like, oh, we're going to do this dumb thing on a plane for MTV.com or whatever. And then all of a sudden, bam, in on it. That's a great, great. a great twist. There's some real, I mean, the, the twists of this movie are actually, I think, pretty legit. Good twists. They it's are. It's a swerve, bro. Yeah. And we get some, we get some, uh, wait, I don't think we're at this point yet. But do we get some Craven on Craven action, too, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. well, I was shot just going to say, well. we get uh, fake Slade confronting real Slade here, Slade, and we get a little bit of a uh, knockdown drag out fight. Yeah. Nice. It shot well. Like, it doesn't really look yeah. poor that, you know, there's yeah. it's the same guy, you know, in a double. John Mann, rest in peace. And a, and a particularly, like, a Canadian ja- a jazz musician versus a stunt <laughs> worker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Slade kind of wins this fight. He knocks him out and, uh, like, uh, what is he, like, shove him in a closet or something on the plane? Something like that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they were in, like, the beverage snack storage area. Yeah, he yeah. puts him somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Now, this, after this happens, though, is one of my personal favorite parts of the film. What's that, Mike? It sets up that the pilot, you know, or the co-pilot, who who's... A bad guy we all know now is like Rutger Hauer. Rutger Hauer is he's taking the plane. He's going to change course to East Kansas because that's the that's the most evil part of the planet, right? <laughs> Literally, <laughs> even even the Pope refused to fly over that part yeah. of Kansas. Do you, do you remember the, uh, the the reasoning why it is? No, 
I forget. What was it? I don't know either. Oh, it's, wow. very, it's, it's very obscure. It's just like we're on the 66th like latitude and long. It's it's like total bullshit. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But we cut we cut to the pilot and he's in there. He's changing course and as he's doing it, he takes a burned CDR and mm-hmm. puts it into <laughs> apparently a CD player on a, a jet, a plane, which I'm sure, like, it's a car. I'm sure they've installed it. Mike, why don't you go knock on the cockpit door and ask if there's one up there? There's not one up there on a regular plane. <laughs> How do you, who's been in a cockpit of a 747? They don't have CD players. <laughs> and, it's a, and it's a bird CDR, too. It's fucking amazing. Well, you know what? We have a strong aviation community listenership. So if one of our listeners out there can speak to this, please comment. Please do. Send it. Thank you send for it that. an email to bmoviemania at gmail.com. No, no, not that. It's bmoviemania podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't get the Gmail, I don't think. I'm not a member of the show. <laughs> It's okay, uh, thank you. It's, it was it was good. Doesn't uh, Jay, so to pick up on Mike's point? I know. Doesn't he put the plane in? He like puts the plane in a kind of a nosedive here. Does he like sends it down yeah. to uh, he starts to, to the stool prophecy? Yeah. He's starting to descend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He wants right. to nosedive that shit into Kansas. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. The most evil part of the earth. Yeah. That For fits. sure, the Pope won't even go there. Church in Kansas is the seventh gateway to hell. Even the Pope, in his visit to Colorado in 1996, would not fly over eastern Kansas. It's reputed to be one of the unholiest places in the world. Yeah, JP Square. He was, he was, yeah. yeah I yeah. think he was in America in like 92. Okay. Yeah, he checks out. Kansas, wow, I'm really yeah. glad we're doing a deep dive on this. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't spend enough time on this podcast talking about the Pope. Slade and Erica have a little fight here, too. We'll, we'll try to breeze through some of this. Chris, do you have anything to say about this uh, Slade and Erica fight? I know you're a big Erica fan. Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Well, this is where uh, we see the results of Chekhov's uh, electric chair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it really was electrified. <laughs> Let's do the hustle. Ah, uh, yeah. Now let's do the hustle. We're getting into some important stuff here. Slade confronts Rucker Hauer. Oh, this is a great scene. <laughs> All right, Tim, take it. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm thinking. I'm th- I'm th- wait, is it? Are you talking real Slade or fake Slade? Real Slade. This is, um, this is real, real Slade. Slade is going to go. Rucker Hauer goes. I mean, this is. I would say. Um, some fantastic acting from Rucker. Sure, absolutely. Because Rucker is basically like, he's like, fuck you, I am in this death cult. We're going to crash into Kansas. Satan is real. <laughs> and then, bam. <laughs> Paul, edit that out. <laughs> bam, shoots himself in the head. We're in the middle of some lightning, gently rocked by turbulence. And we can just sit here. Relax. Enjoy the music. Where are we going? We're all in this together. And we're all going down. So now we're in deep shit. Yeah, we see the ultimate sort of like reality of this intense situation that's been culminating to this point. Right. So listen, I gotta pee. I'm gonna get up and, and hit the loo. Chris, probably not the one back by you because it doesn't sound fun. There's one yeah, up here. Yeah, you know what? In fact, I'm I'm opening a bag of snacks that they gave me now, and it, it's a bag of worms. I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed <laughs> oh, to do with God. this. Oh, God. Like gummy worms? Oh. No. Worms. Like real worms. So I, I do have a question about this next part, Paul, if you're going pee. Jay, you can say whatever you want to say here, but I also want you guys to talk about Nick and Slade teaming up to figure out how they are going to fly this plane, because that's another one of my favorite this parts. This is so. so fucking good. This is really a it, it fantastic. All, it all comes together here, oh, pretty yeah. much. I mean, it really does. Luckily, Nick has studied when when other kids were doing cool stuff. Nick was playing with aviation simulators, <laughs> so he's going to talk Slade through landing the plane. Of course, who's going to land the plane? 
Who you are. We? As in you and... Yeah, as in me and Craven. Jeez, oh, you gotta be kidding me. As soon as they figure out something's wrong here, the, the air traffic controllers call a pilot, and they're like, come in here and help them. Right. Tell them what should be done. And at one point, you know, he hears Nick and Slade talking, and Slade's trying to get this thing down, and the pilot is like, you know what? They got it. If I start talking now, I'm just going to interfere, and they're going to crash. Right, because Nick, Nick is... Nick is talking in the parlance of the streets. Is that what it is? Like, are we afraid that the pilot's going to speak in, in jargon and Slade isn't going to understand I, and just wreck I everything? I think so. Honestly, yeah. Okay. I'll buy that because it sort of stuck out like, why wouldn't you be the guy to talk him through this? Didn't, didn't <laughs> Nick also like halfway hack into the plane so he could see like what was going on? Because he like yes. synced his simulator up with it, right? So he, he not only... He hacked the plane so he could help tell someone how to fly. And um, it's, it's it, I'll admit it, guys, it was a beautiful moment. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Garner, you guys are doing all the right things. Now, it's, it's a very sensitive situation up there. If I take over now, there's, there's a good chance that they'll crash. Ooh, that was nice. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I'm back. We're just talking about how Slade, how Nick has hacked the plane and... S I was just confused why the pilot wouldn't be the guy to talk Slade through this, but Tim Look, had a good if point. If they interrupt this process now, it could it, something could go really wrong. <laughs> That's my point. It's gonna break the bond. But Tim's theory is that the jargon would get in the way, and yeah, totally. Well, it's okay. a, it's, a, it's 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 totally. the vernacular of the working class. <laughs> <laughs> the hacker and the death rocker. They speak the same language, man. Yeah, it's 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 a vocab of the streets. All right. <laughs> Speaking of different vocabs, they're flying into they're flying into the Kansas City International Airport, which was actually originally yeah. called the Mid Continental International Airport. Um, but they refer to it as KCI for short as the call letters. But technically now the IATA code is MCI. You know, short for Mid Continental Continental International. So I just wanted to give you guys that nice little flight fact. Wait, what's that? That was, uh, that's a flight fact? That was a, that, Mike, that was an FF. Paul, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Paul, keep that in there. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So, listen, uh, this is it. I mean, the moment of truth. Can Slade land this plane? Chris, you've had a, a bit of a rough day, so would you like to take this? What, how, how does Slade do land in this plane? Um... Terribly. I mean, they're watching. I mean, no. while the hackers had walking <laughs> Slade through, Nick is walking Slade through how to land this plane. And I mean, they're there. And uh, oh, did you guys hear those cats? <laughs> <Catalyst>? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I don't know. It's really scary back here, guys. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and wait. Okay, Chris, I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish your point, because I have a big question. So, oh yeah, so... Get away from me, you fucking dog. So, okay, so Nick is walking Slade through landing the plane. And there, it's a very tense moment, and just as he's about to hit the ground, the, the feed cuts. Like, the camera's just out. Like, did he crash the plane? What happened? just killed him. They lost him. And it's left there for like five minutes. You're just wondering, did we lose him? Did we lose him? But no, the feed comes back on. Yeah, we landed. All right. Yeah. Woo! Slade is so happy. Great. All the people in the back Sorry. are still happy. Sorry, Even fake Slade, unconscious in the bathroom, is happy. <laughs> no, we have, we, we have landed, but we have not yet finished. Yeah. They're still, still going. Moving. They're still going at full, th full throttle. It's true. All oh, right. Yeah. And it's then, good. yeah, it's... Where do we hit the brake? Bam, slated to brake. Bam, we're fine. Hooray! Ooh. We're doing it, Nick! All right! Woo! Oh, yeah, man! All right, Slade, baby, you are the dude, I'm telling you! Oh, my God! And did you guys notice that we talked about this whole plot of this movie and we really didn't even talk about turbulence? <laughs> no. It's really not a factor in the movie. It's really, it's an implied turbulence. <laughs> it's metaphorical turbulence. It's a mental turbulence. It's it's satanic turbulence. 
<laughs> you could have named the movie that. You could have. My it been literal fine. favorite part of this movie was when, okay, so like you said, they land and it's going real fast. They got to slow down and they figure it out. And there's that moment of where it cuts the feed and no one knows if they're okay until they come back in. And it's great. And everyone's cheering and everyone's going happy. And then the, the control tower just goes, uh, okay, um, flight, whatever the flight is. Uh, could you taxi over to gate C-13, please? Um, there's a waiting queue, but please get into the queue and then taxi into gate Wait. C-13. Thank you. That does not happen. <laughs> Mike, you had me for a second. Oh, what if that happened? What if they made him taxi the plane after, like, emergency <laughs> landing it? It would be amazing. But that, but that leads into the greatest injustice of this movie, is that when they do finally taxi and get to where they're at the proper gate, everyone just kind of goes down the stairs. They don't get to <laughs> slide down the cool emergency slide. That's true. But you know what? I did like the final shot a lot. Yeah. Which is, is they it, just Jay? freeze frame right on Slade's face. <laughs> what does he do? He's just like, yeah. He goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and when he gets the plane stop, Slade's like, we're going to refuel this bird and get back right. up in the air. <laughs> yeah, he wants to keep going. Yeah. He's going to go. He's got oh. a show to put on. Even though we didn't mention that one of his band members got shot and killed. Yeah, but his best friend. Oh, oops. Yeah, his, his best, friend. best friend. And Slade, during the landing process, rips off his upside down crucifix necklace, necklace oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As, as a symbol to, like, you know, I'm praying to God that we land this fucking plane. <laughs> so, <laughs> he does pray. He literally prays out loud, yeah. too. You know, nobody's yeah. really, like, nobody's really worshipping the devil, you know, it's just... You see through the facade a little right, bit. Right, right. It's just an act. That's why he knows about his taxes. Yeah. Well, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my guys. Yeah. Go ahead. If, uh, if, if Slade got, got his own airplane so he could fly because he really liked it, I bet you he would say something like, Slate Airlines, you're craving the skies. <laughs> oh, that's good. Too shabby. That's, that's not, good. It's not too shabby. I, I did really like how when they did stop, he addressed the crowd in the back as if oh, this is your Captain Slate Craven speaker. Yeah, and they're yeah, all like, yeah. <laughs> they loved awesome. it. He really <laughs> saved the fucking day. So he did. He fought a terrorist multiple times. Well, he fought multiple terrorists multiple times, and then landed in a uh, seven forty seven with no experience. <laughs> So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he kicked ass. Oh, and the hacker gets to bone the FBI agent. Oh, it's my God. Them. Thank you, dude. Dude, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, he's like, are you kidding me? You're going to arrest me after all this? The handcuffs are my favorite part of the movie. And uh, Okay, oh, I, Tim. Yeah. Nick helps save the day. Helps. Yeah, he, I mean, he was very, he was a big part of this. I would say it's 80% Nick. Yeah, how does Kate, FBI yeah. agent Kate, reward him for all of his hard work? The FBI agent cuffs Nick, and we all think for a second, like, oh, fuck, like, this dude who just helped save, I don't know, like, you know, 50 people's lives, plus, like, you know, you know FCC violations and, like, all that, you know, all this kind of shit. <laughs> The FBI agent is leading them to the door. Nick just wants to eat a couple pizzas. You know, he's like, you know, why it's cold, cold pizza. pizza? Right, why can't we eat a couple cold pies and have a good time and hang out? <laughs> the FBI agent has him handcuffed, walks to the next room and is, uh, I thought you were hungry. Starts unbuttoning her blouse. I thought you said you were hungry. Basically, like, one of the best pussy-eating jokes I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it was it was definitely a funny lingus. Right, right. Like, this this uh. chick is a, uh, uh, like, a level 11 to 12 horny. Wants Hacker Fury to go down on her. <laughs> and it, tur it turns out, in reality, they have a fucking kid out of this situation, so... That's... Uh, I cannot believe that. I can't either. I just don't see it. He's got his dyslexia glasses on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, like, a blue bandana and shit. Everything's baby blue on him. Oh. Yeah. 
Kate just straight up fucks Nick the hacker. But but <laughs> not just fucks him. She's in total domination of Nick the hacker. So the point yeah. to the point where like a he de- she demands he eats her pussy out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Rating time. <laughs> da, 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 da. Rating time. Oh boy, folks, good thing Tim isn't on the plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, hey, perfect timing. The, the plane the plane is landing. Holy shit. Great, now these, all these orphans can get off my lap. <laughs> what? All these orphans can finally get off my lap. Let's clap for Tupelo. Woo, we're here. Why don't we just hang around on the plane? Yeah, let's just hang out on the plane for a little bit. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. But, you know, we we do have to hang out a little bit longer because we got to get into some ratings here. And, Tim, I understand that uh, you may have come up with a a pretty interesting rating system. Is that uh, that true? Yeah, Paul, uh, I hear you guys do it one out of a hundred. That's right. Yes. So uh, uh, I've picked... um, one out of 100 Rutger Hauer suicides. Okay. Oh. All right. We can do that. We can work with that. That's pretty good. All right. We're going dark. Yeah. We're going this dark. Was a very, this was a very dramatic scene in the entire... I mean, this was like the crux right. of the movie. So. Well, hey, Mike, uh, you know, you're in first class. You're probably getting off the plane first here. So why don't we go ahead and uh, get your rating for Turbulence 3? I can talk. I can talk. It's fine. Marcus, it's, it's okay if I talk, right? Sure, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. All right, go ahead. Okay. The first half of this movie is necessary setup, but it's boring as hell. And then uh, this once once the Slade McLean stuff kicks in, <laughs> like that's where it kicks up, <laughs> and it becomes very enjoyable. I love that. So, I love that name. You know, I, I can't you know rightfully grade it too high but i do think it was fun also the music was awful and terrible and i (laughs) wanted to die during that so i'm just gonna give it a good motherly 66.6 god damn it uh god damn it uh, what? Uh, is that what we, are we all suicides. going to rate in that? Stole my fucking rating. Same, same here. <laughs> yep, yep. I was Across the board! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. All right, well, Jay. Uh, I, I, I wasn't going to do that, but... <laughs> okay, no, that's fine. Good. Um. Yeah, it, definitely the second half is, is good. I like the twists in the movie. Um, it was a, honestly a lot better than I thought it was going to be, and I actually did like the music. And uh, I'm going to say I'm going to give it an 85. Okay. Wow. Very nice. Wow, wow, wow. Chris, how you doing back there? You want to rate this thing? Oh man, I am so glad this flight is over. I am ready to rate this thing and go to the bathroom and get the hell out of here. Um, okay. So yeah, so I uh, I pretty much agree with Mike on everything. Even down to almost the same rating. Um, the first half was kind of like, yeah, you know, it's kind of nice. It's a lot of setup stuff. Um, but then uh, once the uh, once you get fake Craven out there, you know, it, the movie kicks into high gear and it's a lot more enjoyable and a lot of fun. Which is why I have decided to also give it the very appropriate score of sixty six point five. Oh, <laughs> wow! Neighbor of the beast, dick move, <laughs> the real dick the move beast, there. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, you're our uh, special guest. Hey. Why don't you rate uh, Turbulence 3? You know, like I said in the beginning of uh, this episode, uh, A, I think the, the music in this movie is not bad, and it's partially, I would say, thanks to the band uh, Thick Liquid. Mm. I'm going to mm-hmm. sh- I'm gonna do that <laughs> shout-out right now. YouTube them. Uh, but... It, it, uh, the story is pretty solid. Like, there's this this real. It's kind of timely, but there's this real legit sort of tension between the uh, internet community and and corporate entities and this cult process going on. Uh, Mike stole my joke. I wanted to do six point six sixty six point six. I'm gonna do sixty nine point six six six. Oh wow. <laughs> 
Uh, so, oh, shit. so like you know it's not the greatest movie in the world but you know if you're into this kind of shit where there's a very kind of like low key kind of culturally specific hacking or like kind of you know timely goth shit going on it, you know it's fun it's a fun fucking movie you can get drunk it is it's out. fun yeah nice how about you Paul yeah you know I mean me and Tim watch a lot of movies together, and I think that we have a similar, uh, what would you call it, Tim? It's like we, we kind of go for the same things when it comes to, like, early 2000s, like, metal stuff, yeah. hacking stuff, you know, like, we just get real into it. Yeah, you know, I think you and I have the same sort of aesthetic in terms of, right, like, very particular cyberpunk culture. Yeah. But also like sex but sexy shit too. Sexy. It's gotta be sexy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I wanna join the club here. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do sixty six point six 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 nine six nine. Wow. For Turbulence 3. Wow. Heavy wow. metal. <laughs> wow. I that am is glad make... I'm not making this card. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Jake, can you help me with that? Um, tiny, tiny font. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just going to write text on it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for uh, this, our review of Turbulence 3 Heavy Metal. Here's what's happening next time on B Movie Mania. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Uh, actually, do, um, hold on a second. Do we know who's going next? Mike, do you have something planned for this? Can you can you help me out a little bit here? <laughs> oh, shit, shit, shit. Uh, actually, haven't, we haven't figured that out yet, have we? <laughs> no, I totally forgot about that. Hey, hey guys, while you sort all this stuff out, uh, I had Hooters for lunch, and I don't know what fucking gasoline they served me in a glass that I just drank, but I gotta take a shit before I get off the plane. <laughs> so <laughs> just just let me know what you guys figure out, okay? All right, we'll go, but I mean, you might be next. Well, just let, let me know, let me know, let me know. That's fine. Yeah, no problem. I gotta I gotta get out of here. All right. Ugh, hey, my, uh, hey, do you guys see that? What? What? There's something on the wing of the plane out there. What? Oh, shit, hey. Is that? No. Is... It, it can't be. It is! It's the Prince of Magic! Prince, Prince of Magic. He's pointing at me! Yeah, me too! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Ah, what the fuck? Ah! This what are you oh, this is tight. Sorry, Chris. Ugh. Sorry, nothing. You slackers have never determined the selection order for season four. And you're in it! It's a good thing the Jetpack Boy came back. Sorry, Prince of Magic, we've been busy. Prince, Prince of Magic. Ow! You then I'm not watching you? Okay, boys. This time we're re-rolling the dice. Yeah, yeah, I didn't bring dice. Yeah, I didn't either. The Prince of Magic always has a dice! Here, each of you take one. Yeah, couldn't, yeah, couldn't this have waited until I'm out of the bathroom? Yeah. No! <sighs> All right, well, uh, okay, guys. You ready to roll? Let's roll these. All right. Let's roll these. All right. Here we go. All right, sorry, I Mike. I'm just going to squeeze something. All, All right. right, here we go. My first, here's my roll. Uh, I actually got a six. I got a two. All right, well, I got, I've got this, yeah, I don't know where I'm going to roll this, guys. I'm, Just roll it on your leg there. Oh, all yep. right. Oh, God, don't. Oh, no, Chris. Did you just drop that in the toilet? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, boy. I'm not. Awkward. <sighs> well, I'm not going to get it. But it looks like I got a five. Guess that means I'm up, then. It is set on. Okay, well, uh, is the G chat? Are we still on? I've not been teleported before. <laughs> uh, okay, hey, Paul, we, we could have just teleported instead of taking the plane, I guess. What but... the hell just happened? Sorry, uh, it was the Prince of Magic. <laughs> he follows us around ever since last season, I guess. Um, oh, I, I didn't know that. Okay, well, we figured it out, Paul. Uh, I'm up next. Oh, okay. And then, and then, Chris, and then it's Chris, Chris, and then it's Mike. Yeah. 
All right. Well, well, awesome. I'm glad it's settled. Uh, yeah. Jay, take it away. What's next on B-Movie Mania? On the next episode of B-Movie Mania... Guys, I have something that I know you're going to like. We have watched part one at a marathon. Oh, no. And now, <laughs> strap on your boots, guys, because we are yeah. going to watch the FP2. Yes! Nice. 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 Beats of Rage. Beats of Rage. Wow. Yeah. <gasps> Tim is a huge FP fan. A huge FP fan. My name is in the credits of FP2, but I, yeah. I'm pretty sure I introduced Paul to FP1, and he loved it. That's correct. Yeah, same Z. You introduced me as well. Yeah. Nice. But, Tim, you can't be on the next episode. Okay, guys. Time to go. Come on. Get up. Well, I mean, they're telling us that we got to get off the plane. Jay, that's a fucking great pick. Thank you, Mike. That's Thank you. Pick. I thought you guys right. would be excited to see Thank it. Thank you, Marcus. Been Thank wanting you. to see it for a while, so let's do it. FP2, baby. Yes, mm-hmm. baby. Season four, up to a good start. There's a chill on my spine. I've got a feeling divine. Chaos and control. Just shoot me, baby. She'll suck the light from your brain. She'll squeeze the blood from your veins. She's my little steel angel in a dirty magazine. She's kinda itching my addiction and making me insane. She's got a whole lot of love to make you scream. Listen up, maniacs. Do you have a question or a comment? Would you like to uh, send some bourbon to Uncle Lloydy? You can contact the gang on Facebook at B Movie Mania. You can also drop them a line at bmoviemania.com. Reach out, touch them. They are touching themselves, and they might just reach back. I'm Lloyd Kaufman saying, see you next time on B Movie Mania. Woo-hoo. Tim, thank you so much for joining us on the season four premiere of B Movie Mania. We really appreciate it. Hey, I was glad to be here, even though I didn't get a ticket to the sh- to the plane ride, uh, and I just yeah, stayed in my sorry. apartment the whole time. Sorry about it. Hey, at least you're not in Tupelo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> are these tickets round trip? The fuck are we gonna do here? Um, well, Paul, well, I, these I tickets didn't... are not round trip. No, I. I oh my god. I mean, oh. I, I wanted to do oh. the you know hour and a half trip to oh. Tupelo. I, I didn't. I didn't really. Uh, I didn't oh, think boy. that through all the way. Um, all right. Well, damn it, Paul. I'm going. I'm gonna get some boiled peanuts out of the out of the thing. I'm getting some boiled peanuts in the airport. All right. Yeah. You guys don't have work or anything, do you? Yes, we all do. Oh. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll get this figured oh, out. God. Thank you for listening, maniacs. Uh, please, if you like the episode, yeah, uh, do all the stuff. Uh, give us a rating on uh, iTunes. Uh, you know, leave us leave us a review if you'd like. That would be cool. Mike, there's some other cool stuff going on on the. Uh, bmoviemania.com on our store. Can you talk about that real quick before we hop off this plane? Yeah, if you go if you go to store.bmoviemania.com, uh, we've got shirts and sweaters and stuff like that, and uh, you could do that. Are the Slade Craven t-shirts up there yet? Uh, they might be. I, I'm not sure. I don't run... Um, We're going to make ask, a let, Slade Craven t-shirt. <laughs> let me ask Alex. <laughs> hey, Alex, do we have the shirts up yet? Wait, how are you talking to him right now? What do you mean? Where is he? He's up... Wow, he's up here with me. Let's just let's. Go. I didn't buy oh, Alex. No, I didn't bye. buy Alex a ticket. All right, we gotta go. Goodbye. Bye. Look, well, look, guys. Hey, why am I so sticky? Oh God. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank, thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you for flying with us. Enjoy Tupelo. I'm getting off this plane and I need a shower. That's fine. Uh, all right, I'm gonna hit stop right now and uh, go cry. <laughs> all right, bye.